really not a lot that needs to be said about the Gen 1 Hemi crankshafts. All the Hemis had good forged steel cranks. For some reason, however, even clear into the 1970s, Chrysler generally only drilled the back of the crankshaft for a pilot bearing if the engine was getting a manual transmission. Some were not drilled at all, others only partially drilled. This was an unpleasant surprise for some people who decided to convert a car to a manual transmission, especially if they were planning to use something like a new process, A833 4-speed. If the crankshaft hadn't been drilled and the engine was still in the car, about the only option was to try and find a bearing that would fit in the outer register hole and had the right inner diameter for the input shaft. Then the nose of the transmission's input shaft would have to be mostly cut off so it wouldn't bottom out in the crankshaft. Even if I'm not planning on running a manual transmission, if I'm building a Mopar engine for myself, I always check the crank and if it isn't drilled, I have the machine shop drill and mill them for a standard Chrysler pilot bearing. On the other end of the crank, the snout of the crankshafts are the same dimensions for Chrysler, DeSoto, and Dodge Hemis. This means they all take the same balancer. The snout on the early Hemi also happens to be the same dimensions as the LA Chrysler small block. The major difference between the two crankshafts and balancers is the size of the crankshaft key. The early Hemi crankshaft and balancers are cut for a larger key. In the past, most of the balancers listed for the early Hemis were in fact 318 or 340 internally balanced units that had a new keyway cut so it would fit the early Hemis. The keyway is normally cut in a different location so that the timing marks on the balancer will line up with the early Hemi timing tab. There are several balancer options out there for these engines including fluid damper and SFI versions. You'll have to decide for yourself what level of balancer to use, but on a street engine, the stock replacement type is normally more than enough. Chrysler, DeSoto, and Dodge cams are all unique to the brand. When we start talking about camshafts for the early Hemis, we need to start by looking at the differences between the tall and short deck motors. The horsepower wars may have started in the early 60s, but the displacement wars were happening in the 1950s. During that time, the big three might produce an engine for a year or two, but it usually wasn't long before they increased the, dis the displacement. As displacement grew, the blocks eventually were made taller to accommodate crankshaft stroke increases. The early Hemis had a relatively complicated valve train geometry. When Chrysler, DeSoto, and Dodge raised the deck height, they changed the angle of the lifter boards to maintain the correct geometry. This change in angle causes the lifters to be in a different location on the cam, resulting in the cams having to be ground differently to run properly. Within the brands, the cams will physically interchange between tall and short deck blocks, but they will only run properly in the block they were designed for. Besides the differences in cam for tall and short deck engines, there were two styles of cams used in the early Hemis. The long nose with the threaded end and the short nose that had the same end used on the later small block Mopars. The short nose cams used the normal small block Mopar timing chain sets. If necessary, the long nose cams can be machined to accept the short nose timing chain sets. There is a wide variety of new cams available for the Chrysler Hemi to include roller cams. And most, if not all, the new cams for Chrysler Hemis have the short nose. As I mentioned in a previous video, at this time I don't know of any new cams that are being produced for DeSoto and Dodge Hemis. The style of cam you choose may dictate the timing cover you can use. The stock steel timing cover must be used with a long nose cam. If you have a later cam with a short nose, you can use the stock timing cover, which has provisions for a mechanical fuel pump, or an aftermarket aluminum timing cover which is thinner but has no provisions for a fuel pump. The aluminum timing covers are specific to the engine you are using. The one shown is for the 55 and up Chrysler Hemi. There is a different cover for the 51 and 54 engines. Thinner aluminum aftermarket covers are also available for the DeSoto and Dodge Hemis and they are also year specific. A nice conversion for the early Hemi is a conversion to a Chevy water pump.
These are the adapters for the 1955 and up Chrysler Hemi and allow the use of a big block Chevy water pump. The earlier Chryslers can also be converted to a Chevy water pump, but require the aftermarket aluminum timing cover with the built-in water pump adapters. And again, there are also conversions available for the Dodge and DeSoto engines. On the 55 and up Chrysler Hemis, the water pump conversion can be done while keeping the stock timing cover by using the long style big block Chevy water pump. It's not a real good picture, but that's what this engine has. Also on the 55 and up Chrysler Hemi, if you use a thinner aluminum timing cover, you can use a short style big block Chevy water pump. This saves a couple of inches on the length of the engine, which may or may not be important. One thing to note is that Hotheads, who sells the timing covers and water pump conversions, also sells pulleys to go with their conversions. If you mix and match things, you will have to come up with pulleys that will line up with each other and the accessories that you add.